the work being done in certain parts of it. it. It primarily is a question around the habitat garden, the, the natural uh, and native plantings that are that exist right now, what we had formerly called the butterfly garden. So that particular piece of it is getting is enlarged in the new plan. We'll, we'll get bigger, but also in the plan there is a walkway through it. So here's a question, mm -hmm. what's the trade-off then? Because one of the things you were gonna do is, one of the purposes is so that you could have public programs and more access to public programs. Yes. How does that impact the public programs? That and piece of programs? the landscape project would not impact okay. the public programs because it's on the side of the library as opposed to the um, Park the Avenue Plaza. area, mm -hmm. okay. right, which is where, that would be the area where the programming would take place. Okay. Now, and there could be some programs that happen in and around the Habitat Garden, depending on, you know, whether or not. That'd be, be more like a, a small group of people. Exactly, activity mm -hmm. to Walking. find things, to yeah. find plants or pollinators mm -hmm. or, you know, but something like the that. The plan, although we've, we've approved it, this, because of the delay and sort of getting the people doing it, I, I guess it's sort of human nature. We just sort of continue tinkering with it because we're sort of in the... Right, <laughs> right. In limbo. But <laughs> We're in limbo a little bit. Yeah, we're in limbo until we get the construction piece settled. Mm -hmm. And right. we're, and obviously the weather is setting in. This isn't going to happen until the spring, so we're just going to right. try to do our best to keep our hands off the plan at a certain point. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could use it for... Um, something like having art, artists come and draw from the garden, and I was thinking of kids doing that and then having mm -hmm. their work, yeah. you know, There's downstairs. Of, yeah, there are a lot of ways that we can make there. use of the garden that we haven't That's a really nice thought idea. of yet. Particularly if they have the walkway, too, they can sort of sit and sort of get right close to uh, uh -huh. it. All right. That's, that's your thing. <laughs> I know. Wait. There'll be no bees. Okay. Get close to the bees. Eating, eating my bugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's where we stand. Okay. And as I said, because we realized that we weren't going to get it done, it was not possible to proceed. You know, it's, it's going to be a spring activity. Okay. Um, director's report. Okay. Well, here's our new welcome packet that was created by the Community Services Department. And it, um, oh. anytime someone has a new, signs up for the library uh -huh. card, we'll be handing this out. It's a work in progress and it will change. Um, but right now they have a bookmark. <laughs> Off the shelf, the youth programming flyer. And these little sheets talk about the different electronic mm. um, Nice. Resources mm -hmm. that we have and how to use them on the back. Mm -hmm. And then there's a map of the library. Um, as soon as the one-page strategic plan um, document is done, that will go in here. Mm -hmm. When we want to, like for example, um, publicize one book, then that will go in here as well. Sure. But it's just mm -hmm. something to hand out to our new residents. Nice. That's nice. nice. It's mm -hmm. very colorful. Sorry, I kind of yeah. messed it up. I oh, <laughs> terrible. And we will be having a new marketing plan that will be in the September board packet, just to let you know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. um, a few weeks ago, we had a visit from James Pitzer, who is a senior loss control consultant at Gallagher Bassett in Itasca, big mouthful. Mm -hmm. Essentially, um, through our Lyra Insurance, he come, he, we had a, a multi-page document to fill out, and he recorded all of our answers and gave us a lot of advice about safety and um, policies that we, or procedures that we may mm -hmm. need to update. I spoke to him today, so that means he's getting close. He's going to give us back a complete report on um, what we can do to make the library safer mm -hmm. for everyone, which I thought was a great idea. Yeah. And we've mm -hmm. never had that done before. Mm -hmm. So, and um, Randy took him all through the building so that he could see the different areas. And he's really concerned about 
making the library as safe as could possibly be. Did you? Did he hook up with the CVI contact? Because I see on the back page you talk about no. I, well, security. that was one of the questions that I will tell you was in response to a question you had. So I thought I would include that. But okay. that the technology was one of the questions that he had, and there. Ten questions or so, I think. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that re report once we have it. Okay, thanks. Um, as you've seen, our new signage has been installed, mm -hmm. and <laughs> with any project, there's always some tweaks that need to be done. Mm -hmm. And so Sarah Beth Brown is leading that. Um, the, anybody who ha has a question, in fact, I know Rick came in today with a question about one of the signs. So we'll mm -hmm. tweak it, maybe switch some around, but um, hopefully you're finding those helpful and hopefully our patrons will find them helpful mm -hmm. as well. In terms of our staff, well, a, could I just oh, add sure. one thing? If we ever get around to it, it would be very nice to have something on the elevator that shows you what floor it's on. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to wait for 10 minutes for it to go uh, up or down. Uh, well, that's, that's, I think, an elevator that's issue versus yeah, a signage. signage but just a, but no, it's not signage. I'm, yeah. I just was <laughs> connecting it with Tronic. That's a new elevator. With the elevator. Oh, oh, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. The question there will be whether or not manufacturer of that elevator yeah, right. offers a different control that would have the floor indicator incorporated into it. Right. You can't add that if it wasn't designed exactly. in, it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Our elevators are old enough that that probably uh, isn't in probably what we not. ordered. Mm -hmm. So at such time as we were replacing the elevators, it could be added. But unless it's already in the manufacturer's specs, it's not something we could change. Right. It'd be worth checking. And since it's a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollars per elevator, yeah. to we put probably in won't do that right away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I could stand there, I guess. <laughs> um, so I do want to say that we really do have a wonderful staff and they're doing yeah. a lot of great things. I just highlighted four, but I could have gone and highlighted more. But um, Nancy Wagner is working on our local history vertical files, uh -huh. which is like amazing. Yeah. There are so many unbelievably interesting ephemeral things there that it's really wonderful that now it will be indexed and it will be easier to find. It'll be easier for local residents to know what's there That's as great. well as people who are mm -hmm. have moved away and are researching. Mm -hmm. The stuff mm -hmm. on the houses is really interesting. Mm -hmm. I know I've looked at that people. It's a variety of really cool things. And um, Gail, is she digitizing it? Uh, no, just it? indexing it. Indexing it. And where are those files? I've never even heard about those before. So do you know where the fireplace is in the recent arrivals room? Yes. So it's just directly, well, if, if you're facing the fireplace, it's that little room directly oh. to your left. Okay. Right. Now, some of the things yeah. in that room have been digitized. Mm -hmm. These particular things she's adding to... Um, the index is a digital record, but the, the actual content right. you would have to come into You'd the room to, to see. see. But you can actually search for documents that exist mm -hmm. in the room now. Nice. She found something for me that the Chicago, that the, the Wilmette Historical Society didn't have, so yeah, you're doing mark. good. Well, <laughs> yeah, we complement their collections. Yes. They so do we have don't have everything they have or right. vice versa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, there, is there any kind of cross information with them so that people who are at the Historical Society oh, yeah. will know that they can come to our space to? to oh, sure. Okay, so that's. Sure. That, okay. And vice versa. Vice versa. Yeah, I mean, much of what is much of what is in that room is searchable on the internet by anybody. So, okay. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Krista Hutley, who is our new teen like well, relatively new teen Bob's librarian, she's she's going to be um, a monthly blogger for the Young Adult Library Service Association's blog, The Hub, Good. Good. which is <laughs> wonderful. And Ruth Bell, actually, she has written out two creativity grants, one today we just got, and then one to, um, to train storytime librarians how to play the ukulele, which I thought was, um, you know, it's an easy instrument, and music just adds so much yes, to the storytime. So, so it's a, I think it's yeah. a darling idea. Mm -hmm. And um, this isn't so darling, but my, <laughs> this is necessary. So Mike is up. Mike Boone, our HR person, is updating the, um, our job descriptions, and also including essential functions and physical requirements, so that if someone, um, it, it, he was suggesting that it'll be much better to have it 
codified, so if someone needs a doctor's note or we know what the uh. job entails, um, he just really thinks that that's, uh, it's an important part of something. And we haven't had that before in all of our job descriptions. So that's what he's doing. The next subject, programming. We have had an amazing amount of programming this summer. Yeah. I, I know that we the best program, or the most well-attended program in the youth department was the firefighters and the fire trucks. And if you looked in section eight on the this, this oh, yeah. back of the first page, you'll see the children being um, cooled off by, the, oh, <laughs> by a fire hose, which is like amazing. Um, <laughs> So that's been really fun that we had a, a lot of success with that. And the youth department um, visited, I also think this is really great, a new thing, visiting camps oh. for over um, 300 children and counselors. They did um, uh, story times and visits for them. Oh, oh that's so, great. Yeah, that's great. Um, the adult department also has a new program, um, BYO Books. They're trying this where patrons can bring their brown bag lunch and not necessarily discuss one book, but share with other members of the community the books that they've read, the books they've enjoyed. And um, Rachel Garcia is our new, relatively new reader services specialist, and she was the one who started this program. I think it's a great idea. Is that going to be monthly? Or yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, there was a good, for the first time program, there yes, was. She had Five attendees, which is a very good number for August. Right, yeah. and, and the first new program. program. So yeah. she was very be, pleased with that. That could be good. <clears throat> and once again, the library brings amazing authors to the community. And um, Abdi Nor Iftin will be discussing his memoir, Call Me American, on Thursday, October 18th at the Wilmette Junior High, and I understand it's the League of Women Voters book club book, oh. so go mm -hmm. check out your copy <laughs> right now. So um, that's going to be pretty, that's going to be pretty amazing. Um, in terms of our strategic plan, we have updated the content that we have on the, the web about our specific five strategic plan goals. We're going to have a one-page summary available soon, and Betty talked about our library of things. Um, and as I said, too, we'll be evaluating the collection on an ongoing basis. So even though it's out, it's not the the goal is or the objective is completed, but it's going to be a continuing process. Um, I did include a little paragraph because Lisa had asked about what our IT consultants are doing about security and how the library deals with protecting our data. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, it's, I think it's one of the strong points of CVI, who are computer consultants, um, sometimes to the dismay of staff, that they are very protective of the data and protective of the network. So. Um, and also we have you know, antivirus software on all our computers, the library credit card for the patrons, it's PCI compliant. And also, unlike Cersei, where I could have told you the password of any library <laughs> in the, you know, it was yeah. all the same kind of formula, formula. Now we all have individual passwords and individual usernames and passwords, so it's much, much more good, secure. Good, good. Mm -hmm. And our, our public catalog, we're, we're tweaking that as well. Um, there's a, a group of us that are meeting, actually, I think it's tomorrow, to talk about the colors. We have a few different colors now. I don't know if anyone's noticed that on the catalog. Um, and also, this is through CCS. We are going to be having um, an updated version of Novelist Select. And what's neat about that is you can ask for, um, I mean, ask the computer. You can search by, if you like, for example, like fast-paced books, it can search and suggest. Or if you like, like themes where a person in the book is framed for doing, you like mysteries, <laughs> you can search by that as well. So I think that that'll be a nice oh, benefit. Yes for our <coughs> staff mm -hmm. and public. <coughs> and the Morton Grove, Morton Grove Public Library is now our newest member of CCS. I think last meeting I said the vote was coming and then the vote happened and mm -hmm. they, their holdings will be integrated into our catalog in January of 2019. Mm -hmm. 
And we have a new Mac network so that the, we've had the Mac computers for a while, but now the, the Mac computers in the Youth Services Department can be, um, you can print through the network, you can make reservations through the network, and then we're going to work on the computers in the teen room as well. Okay. Any questions? No, just one compliment, if I may. Um, over the last couple of reports, uh, in our meetings, you've changed the format of this information, oh. which is kind of our monthly breakdown of what's being borrowed from the library. And so now we have a chart that goes month by month, right. so we can see what's trending up or down, or, which is great. Thank you very much. I mean, we did that. Oh, kudos great. to whoever this idea that was. That's then, just electronic. Oh, it is? Okay, well, that's, I mean, that we didn't get that before. Not, not like, well, well this, this one. Well, this is new. That in, one's this one, new. Right, in, in conjunction with this, right. which is mm -hmm. with the idea of what the holdings are versus what's taken out on a month to month. That was, the, um, yeah. that's, I mean, that was just me picking one of okay. the well, I, I, canned reports that CCS provides okay. for us, but thank you. Yeah, I mean, this, it to is, me, it's, yeah. it's, I think, more helpful, and it becomes very clear oh, what, good. what the trends are good. and what the percentage of the, of the library resources are being oh, used. Oh, good. So, well, yeah. you know what, I was asking questions about the report, if, but I do want to say, I wanted to talk a little bit about that, the, um, Statistics, I know you can read them, it's kind of boring just to look at it, but I wanted to, I found this article that was published, or uh, uh, they published the results of a study, and this is the Audio Publishers Association on audiobook usage. And they